All right, so we have a question from Patreon. Okay. All right, so Lucius Showcase asks, uh, do you plan on making the jump into VR? And if so, which rig would you choose? So. Okay. Uh, the reason why I have Dave Nunez on this this question, well, why don't you tell people why you're qualified? Because when you told me, I was like, what? Okay. Are you serious? So uh, in 2007, I completed my PhD in computer science, uh, and the topic was virtual reality. So uh, I spent, well, five years during my PhD, and then before that, another four years during my master's degree. So I've spent about 10 years researching and thinking about virtual reality, why it works, trying to get it to work, and so on. And this was in the kind of early noughties when VR was super hard to do and it was all research grade stuff and right. there were no Oculus or anything. So I've got to see some of the really dirty and nasty side of, uh, of VR. So let me ask you then, um, what did you think whenever the, the Oculus Rift was announced and when Facebook decided to buy it for $2 billion, were you like, I'm not paid enough? <laughs> uh, well, the first thing I thought was, I really got to put ad block onto Facebook. They got too much money. Um, so I was surprised that Facebook bought it because I, nobody still knows what they're gonna do with it. Um, the other thing that I was surprised about Oculus was when Oculus announced, uh, so VR has basically failed twice. Right? right. So the first time there was a guy called Ivan Sutherland in the kind of 1950s or 60s. And he's, when you think about computer graphics, mm -hmm. like he's the guy who essentially invented computer graphics, right? Hmm. <clears throat> and they were doing it for building essentially simulators for the US military. And that works like the Sutherland. Like training and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like the Sutherland company, if you want to become a pilot for you know Alaskan Airways or something, you will still train on a simulator, oh. which is driven by this. This, may, this is why you're so into flight simulators, isn't it? It's, all, it's coming together. See the brain here? I'm, I'm actually thinking. <laughs> that's right. So, um, so that kind of works, but obviously that's industrial. It's super expensive, right? Those simulators cost hundreds of thousands of dollars right uh, then in the kind of mid 90s so kind of started from the late 80s into the mid 90s uh, people try to consumerize VR and that's when we see things like uh, the Sega Master System it's got the shadow glasses uh, the virtual boy which, uh -huh. and it's actually interesting because the virtual boy is kind of a poster child why VR failed in the 90s because mm. technically speaking it is quite hard and expensive to do okay and Nintendo tried to cut corners and do it in the typical Nintendo you know cheap and cheerful yeah, kind of sure. way and didn't quite get there and so people became disillusioned um, so, I think uh, now the technology is kind of there that you can do something at a reasonable price. I don't think Oculus is a reasonable price, I should say. I think it's way expensive. But really? Okay. <clears throat> you could do something at a reasonable price, which gives you a pretty good experience. So I think we could see it succeed now. Okay, so I have two questions as a gamer, and I, you know, I, I follow this a little bit, but yeah. I do want to know kind of, you know, why is VR so hard, right? So you kind of touched on that a little bit. It sounds like it's a mm -hmm. processing issue, and then also why is it so expensive? Like, yeah. is, is it is it connected? Is that the reason why? Or yes. So essentially, the what you're trying to achieve mm -hmm. in VR is an experience which is called virtual presence, right? Okay. And essentially, it's the sense that you're no longer sitting in front of your machine playing, you're somehow inside the virtual world, right? Okay. Uh, that's the goal. So right. if you want to feel like you've been tra transported somewhere, you got to do that. Uh, that's in contrast to augmented reality or AR, something like the HoloLens, right, which mm -hmm. tries to bring the virtual objects to you. Oh, uh, okay. In so, virtual so like, presence, it moves you out into the virtual world. I right? see. So, 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 so the difference is like you're looking through and it's putting like, say, a dragon uh, you know, on your table or something right, like that. Exactly. Versus okay. you move, you move into a dungeon in front of the dragon. Okay. Right? So, so virtual presence essentially uh, the theory is that, and there's a fair amount of research to support this, that if you achieve something called immersion, then you'll experience presence. And so immersion is when you essentially take all your senses and replace them with digital signals or mm -hmm. whatever signals, right? Uh, and people think, oh, that's not too hard. We've got five senses. Well, we don't have five senses, right? I forget the exact number, but it's in the order of 12 or 15. Okay. Uh, some things are very easy to do, like uh, vision, for example. I mean, if you buy a NVIDIA card now, you get fantastic visuals. Yeah. Uh, if you sound is pretty easy to do well, if you've got a nice surround sound rig, you can you know, get, have a sense of like spatial sound. Uh, other senses like proprioception are very hard. Like proprioception is, uh, your sense of how your body is positioned in space. Oh, okay. Like, am I leaning? Am I, you know, off the ground? Am I down? Are my arms stretched out? All that kind of stuff. Very, very hard to do. And the interesting thing is when you're having an experience in the real world, uh, all of these senses are correlated, right? Like, if I'm sitting on a roller coaster, we were talking about roller coasters yeah. before this, I'm seeing certain things, but my body's experiencing things that match, right? Like, if the horizon suddenly does this, my middle ear is also 
giving me signals that I'm leaning. Oh, right? okay. So if those things mismatch, then you start to experience something called simulator sickness, which is kind of like motion sickness, uh, right? And, I, and I've experienced that on my right. own, where I don't get motion sick very easily, but I was on a roller coaster uh, with, with my little my little view master there. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was getting motion sick and I was really surprised. I, I didn't, it, is it also like a frame rate issue or a, a latency problem yes. as well? So latency is related. So because you're essentially when one of your senses starts to experience something, uh, it, your mind creates an expectation that the rest of the thing should correlate and, you know, have uh, the corresponding experience. Okay. And if it doesn't, for whatever reason, including the frame rate lags, or the sound starts to drop a couple of milliseconds behind the video, for example, mm. that's when you can start to experience this kind of stuff. So it's right? really it's processor, processor intensive, right? So yes. So the way we do it today, it is very processor intensive. So there are some interesting ways which people have got around this. Hmm. So for example, if you go train to become a Boeing pilot and you sit in a simulator, one of the things you experience, like, you know, if you sit in a plane and when the plane's about to take off and the engine's going, you kind of push into your seat from all the power. Right. How do you do that in a simulator? So the way the Boeing guys do this is very simple. They tilt the whole simulator upwards a little to kind oh. of sink you to your seat. Okay. Right? So there are ways that you can kind of get around this, but it requires a lot of research. Mm -hmm. um, there's no good theories about it. It's not like if you're doing good computer graphics, there's a bunch of mathematics you can go look up and say, okay, this angle has to be precisely this according to this formula and it'll look right. We don't have that for VR, right? So we don't mm. really know how to do this full immersion experience for all the different sensors. So vision we've got clocked, uh, sound we got clocked really well, proprioception not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, smell is something that people did a lot of research in. smell vision. vision yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the problem with smell actually is not that you, generating smells is actually not hard. So they had this rig which was... This, like, was, this was in, in theaters, in like in the 50s, Yeah, right? in the 50s, but yeah. they, they carried on researching okay. this, right? So in the 90s, somebody in MIT built this rig where... So the same way that you can build color out of red, green, blue, any color you want, right? Oh. Um, so they had these different kind of chemicals which you could mix and match and make whatever smell you wanted. The problem was, like, if you want to make... I'll show you a red image and then a green one. I can make the pixels black and then make them green. Uh -huh. They couldn't figure out a way to extract the smell <laughs> to bring in the new one, right? So if you're like in a room with bananas and you pump out the banana smell, cool, now I move over to oh. the next room. How do you get rid of the oh, lingering wow. banana that, smell, that's right? interesting, yeah. So they tried fans to pump it out, but they made too much noise. <laughs> so there's all kinds of weird little quirks and technical hitches, right? So huh. as a gamer though, so let's talk about like, you know, if you just want to go out and do VR at home. So, because yeah, I guess the thing that, that always kind of sticks with me is that, you know, they have games that have amazing visuals today, like, you know, oh, Skyrim yes. and all that sort of stuff. And I look at that, I'm like, well, why can't they just do that in 3D? Like, why can't they yeah. just do that same thing, you know? Uh, what's the challenge there? So, the challenge there is actually that you can do that. You can totally do that. Okay. The challenge is purely money. So, what okay. you need to do to do what's called stereopsis, which is a kind of, you know, depth the sense of depth. Mm -hmm. um, you essentially need to draw a different picture to each eye. Okay. So you could have two sure. graphics cards with two monitors and somehow pump into your eye, which is what the Oculus and the HTC Vive do. I see. So and that's it, right? But you've got to pump out a 4K image because if you want a 1080p for each eye, now you're drawing 4K. Oh. So that's why it's expensive because now you've got to suddenly you've doubled your memory bandwidth, you've doubled everything. Then why do you think the Oculus is so expensive? So the key to, the thing that makes head-mounted displays like the Oculus and the Vive expensive is not the graphics card or the screen or anything. It's the optics which sit between the monitor at the front of the display and your eye. Hmm. Because oh, what really? needs to happen is your eye has to be, if I'm looking, let's say I'm looking at something in the far distance, Mount Rainier or something, right? My eye muscles are totally relaxed because they don't need to focus on something nearby. Right. If I put a photograph of Mount Rainier six inches from my face, yeah. where, the, where the HTC Vive screens are, my eyes have to stress. Oh. And that, the degree that your eyes are stressed is another cue for immersion. Huh. Right. So what you need to do is you need to kind of project the image and defocus it in a way that it looks focused when your eye is relaxed. And those optics are expensive. Really? So that's, that's what makes head-mounted displays expensive, okay. actually. Yeah. That's crazy. So, okay, so to get back to the question, um, sounds like you're not completely sold on VR at this point, right? Is There's one case for okay. which I'm sold. So for me, I would never play something like Call of Duty. I, I enjoy playing Call of Duty, I'm ashamed to say. It, no, so I, 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 I've, I've actually enjoyed okay. them as well, so. Okay, okay, so now that we're all out, yeah. of, out of that closet. <laughs> yeah. So um, I would never play a game like that on VR because you would never be able to simulate the running correctly. It would always be 
Oh. Like, not a great experience, so I may as well just play it on my desktop. Well, it's so fast anyways, right? right. It never feel real. Yeah, that's right. I mean, imagine you had to run, physically run that much. <laughs> oh my god, like after two minutes of Call of Duty, I could, you're out, right? Yeah. Um, but for uh, vehicle simulators, things like Elite Dangerous or Flight Sim, I would definitely go for it, right? Because mm -hmm. you're sitting in your chair just like you would be. And oh, then the experience is actually quite good. Like I've actually got to play with some of those things and then the experience is actually really, really nice. Hmm. So if you're into like vehicle simulators, I think with the technology that you can buy now, you probably have a pretty awesome time. Mm -hmm. um, but for things like people simulators, I wouldn't do it. I see. Uh, and if you enjoy things which are, I mean, if you're not going for the sense of presence, if you don't want to be transported into that world, like if you're playing, you know, like a lot of indie games, uh, retro games, right? Okay, um, like like they're 3D or something like that. Yeah, I mean, right? it's like you don't want to feel like you're in the world. You, the, the art style is completely different. That's not yeah. the point of experience is that. Or if you play like strategy games or abstract games, no point. There's no point, right? You, you, you remind me that um, I've jumped into this a little bit. I've mentioned the Viewmaster. Yeah. So, so th this is the most current version of the Viewmaster. And essentially, it is basically Google Cardboard that you just put your Glasses phone on. here. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so it's it's much more elegant solution than that. Yeah. The reason why I mention that is because there is an indie game that you can download for free, I believe. And it's basically breakout in first person. And essentially everywhere you look is your little paddle mm. and it knocks yeah. the ball back in this 3D environment. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. I mean, it's completely not realistic and it's super yeah. fun and it works really yeah. well. Yeah, I think it, uh, ultimately it comes down to like with a lot of these new technologies, like 3D accelerators were the same thing when they came out, mm -hmm. right? Yep. There was a small number of apps at the time which took advantage of them, and most didn't. Like mm -hmm. most games just didn't use them at all. And then pe that niche kind of grew. So I think, you know, given that the, you have to spend, you know, $1,000 plus, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you, you know, it's better if you wait and see if game companies take advantage of it, or if this is yet another case of the 90s and it kind of fizzles out, right? Yeah. And the problem is it's a self-reinforcing loop because right. if, if we don't buy it, it, no one's going to write <laughs> yeah. the code. So, yeah. I think, so you've mentioned some of the problems with VR. Uh, at PAX last year, I tried a couple VR headsets on, and mm -hmm. I was generally blown away, but I ran into a situation very much like, like you described, where um, it was a medieval scenario. I was in a forest, there was a, there was a, a castle off in the distance, and I was running, uh, and the, 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 this path was kind of going up the yeah, mountain, yeah. and Rebecca had to hold me, because I, I was just... Sway. Yeah. I was Yeah, I was starting <laughs> to sway, and all of a sudden I'm looking up at the trees, and I wanted to kind of lean yeah. back. It was it was really hard to do. I could not play that standing yeah. up. I would have to be sitting down and just sort of accept that I'm on... And that I'm not moving my legs. It was yeah, yeah. a really wild experience, but I, I liked it though. It was pretty neat. Based on that, I am tempted to jump in to the uh, the, the PlayStation Four uh, yeah. Project Morpheus, whatever that is, when it comes out this mm -hmm. fall, because I don't have a modern PC. I, I mostly do Mac, and it's right. an older Mac, so f the processing power would be a problem for me. So I, I but I already have a PS4, right? Yeah. So that's sure. my that's the one I'm probably going to look at. So I think. Uh, the console VR is probably what's going to make it work, right. to be honest. But, um, so a lot of people are like, why is PlayStation coming out with a 4K PlayStation? What's the point? It's like, for VR? Definitely. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so obvious. Yeah. Two times 1080p equals 4K. There, there you go. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. So it probably will require me to buy another console. Well, I suspect <laughs> what will happen is they'll, you know, you can play it 720 or get the new one and, yeah. and get it, which... Which I think is, I mean, ultimately the reason that new technologies like this exist is because people want to make money, right? right. So um, they're always fantastically expensive because, you know, let's say you pay, what is it, 750 for an Oculus or something. Um, there's probably been, you know, multiple billions of dollars into the research and development mm -hmm. of that device. So it's going to take a lot of time before... Uh, Facebook makes any profit on the Oculus, frankly, like the old Xbox was, right, for Microsoft. So, yeah, um, yeah it's expensive, uh, but it's not like they're just cleaning up, right? This is a completely risky venture if you're in, right. in this kind of field today. So, hmm. um, so what I would say if you ask me, hey, should I buy this or not? I would say, if there is a game which you really enjoy, which will work well with it, mm -hmm. then yeah, why not? It'll probably improve your experience, right. give it a shot. But I would definitely try it out first somewhere because about 30% of people have a really bad simulator sickness reaction. No, no, no matter about the hardware or the problem. No matter about the hardware, right? Some people are just more sensitive to it. So okay. it's definitely something you should try out first. Hmm. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you've just, you know, spin around yeah, the circles and then throw up. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Way cheaper. And paid to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
Very cool, man. Well, thanks very much for coming on and okay. bringing your uh, your knowledge. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, RabbitEngineering.com or on Facebook. Uh, the group's called Rabbit Engineering. Uh, I'll be looking out at the comments in the video. Mm -hmm. So if people want to ask me stuff, please feel free. I'll try and answer as many as I can. By the way, Rabbit Engineering is the company that makes these little guys right here that I show in many of my little intros. So <laughs> That's right. This is, these are awesome. So very cool. All right. Thanks. I feel like we have to make a virtual boy. Or we have to watch a lawnmower man. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> that is so Speaking of really bad. bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll make you throw up without VR. Yeah. I know. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and take care. Take it easy. I want to thank Dave again for coming on my channel and dropping the knowledge. This is a pretty complicated subject and I had no idea all of the challenges that were involved. And so it was cool having somebody who just has so much in-depth knowledge to kind of bring it on and explain it. I learned quite a bit. I also wanna do a big shout out to Patreon. You guys are the ones who make these kind of videos possible. Thank you very much for the support.